All right, so in this video, we're going to look at how to calculate bar graphs from our data. And uh, for bar graphs, uh, they can be relatively complex compared to some other kinds of graphs, but generally you should not use raw data to create your bar graphs. You should use averages or things like that in order to calculate your bar graphs. So we're gonna look at a couple of different options based on the things that we've calculated in order to make our bar graphs. Um, our bar graphs for this project are required to be sales and profit, although there's no particular reason why you can't also do it for cost or other things. That's just not what we're asking for in this project. So we have a lot of data from um, the sales. We have lots of different averages we can choose from. And this is kind of messy. We There are ways to do these uh, build these graphs from um, the data as it is right now, but it's going to be a little bit easier for us if we first uh, create smaller tables that just have the data in it that we want to graph, not all this extra stuff. That's why we originally reorganized this graph to make the line graph in the first place. And now if we reorganize this data again a little bit more, then we can actually use it to create um, our graphs more easily than creating it from um, this table where we have the department names on one end and things that we want to graph on the other. So I'm going to copy these columns down here for my sales, cost, and profit. And I'm in this case, you can start a new spreadsheet. Um, but I'm going to just copy them down to the bottom. And then what I'm going to do also is I am going to then go to my previous calculations and I'm gonna to try to figure out which graphs I want to plot. Now, one way that I can graph this data for let's say sales is I can graph using overall averages. So let's find my overall average. So I have an overall average here, or I can go back to my the end of my longer table, but the values are gonna be the same in either case. And so if I wanna do overall averages, I'm going to label my uh, header overall averages. And I can point at the cell I want to copy. This is a sales column. So I'm going to point at my overall average for sales. And then once I have that, again, we can copy down the column by dragging or copying and pasting. Now I can do the same thing because of the spacing. I can do the same thing for cost if I want to do that. I should also copy my header and then same thing for profit. Now these are all uh, gra good graphs. They're nice and simple, easy to interpret. Now, another way that I can calculate averages, if my graphs need, uh, uh, calculate these bar graphs or set them up, uh, if these graphs need to have a little bit more of a breakdown Maybe I want to calculate my weekly averages, my week one, week two averages. I can also do that week one average, week two average, week three average. And again, feel free to widen the columns as necessary. Um, but we can also point at our previous weekly averages back in our sales table, make sure you're in the right table. And then point and click. And again, because we have our data organized nicely, I have one formula, all the week one and week two averages are all right next to each other. And then I can copy them down the table. Again, I'm just essentially copying and pasting the values. Um, I, I don't want to copy and paste the formulas because the formulas are pointing at other cells, but I can point at the cell that I want to copy. And then same thing for these remaining tables.
Now my my graphs should represent all of the data in some fashion. So these are three separate values representing three separate weeks, but they still collectively represent all of the data. And the other way that I can do this is to calculate from the day of the week values that I calculated over here. So I'm not gonna worry about copying those because I can actually just work from these tables. They're already set up in a relatively compact way. All right, so now that we have our data reorganized, we can go ahead and make our graphs. So we're gonna highlight the data we wanna put in the graph, and then we're gonna to go to insert, and we're gonna select chart. And in this case, the default came up with a pie chart. We don't want a pie chart in this video. We want a bar graph. The um, Uh, sorry about the air and phone call. Uh, all right, so what we want to do is we then want to double check once we've created our graph. We wanna make sure that um, the graph is properly labeled, uh, that the, the title is uh, descriptive and that our labels are appropriate. These are departments, so that's good. Overall averages, we could probably add um, in dollars. So let's change our chart title. This is the vertical axis. Overall averages in dollars so that the units are there. Um, overall averages by department. Uh, we should probably specify that this is sales. Since we might have a profit graph that is similar. And so now we have a properly labeled graph. Now. Um, we could also, if we wanted, uh, if we go back to setup, we could have a horizontal graph that would also be fine. The horizontal orientation is a little less standard in mathematics, but it is somewhat common in business. Um, for this graph, we do not need any of these stacked or cluster column graphs. They're not going to change anything for us. Uh, and we don't need any of these fancier graphs for that. So this would be our sales graph. Now we can repeat this, of course, for our profit graph. Now, as with the line graph, I'm going to move this out of the way. Since I didn't fill in those tables, I can put it over the blank tables. That's fine. Uh, and then we would repeat this for our profit, highlight the data, and then go to insert chart. And this is our overall average. And again, if we click on things, then we can change the titles. This is overall profit averages by department. And for the vertical axis, overall profit averages in dollars. And then once we are satisfied with it, again, drag it off of our data. Um, it can be over the blank tables, but it shouldn't be over top of the original data that we're basing the graph on. Now, as I said, another way that we can do this to cover the entire time span of data we have is to do these collective averages um, we have averages from week one, week two, and week three here. We can also create graphs from that. And this would create a slightly different kind of bar graph. So if we highlight and we go to insert chart. Now, the one thing that we want to be careful of is that when we get our uh, graph properly labeled, that it is going to collect them by department because it's very hard to see which one is doing the best in terms of sales or profit if they're collected by, let's say, week one, week two averages. Um, we want to collect them by uh, department. And of course, we have to have a good label. Vertical axis title is average sales in dollars and we would want a chart title. Um, just listing the column names is not a good chart title. That doesn't mean anything. 
this is average sales by week per department. And the fact that it's sales is very important. Uh, that would be our good graph. So access titles, a descriptive title, and again, covering all of the data. And then uh, we can create a similar graph for profit, but as with everything, don't leave it over top of the data. And our, again, our profit graph would look somewhat similar. Insert chart. We can change it in the graph directly. So average profit by week per department, or you can change it in the customization tool. Uh, and we also need a vertical axis title, average profit in dollars. Now, the third option we have from our, our calculations to make a bar graph would be a little bit more complicated, but it would be using these day of the week values. Now, the thing to keep in mind about this is, again, even though these titles are Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, we don't, we're not actually interested in which day of the week does the best sales. For this project, we're interested in which departments are doing the best. And so when we build those clusters, as we saw in the previous graphs, we want the clusters to be the departments and not the day of the week. So I'm gonna highlight this data. Now, if we have additional averages on the end of the data, we don't want to include averages or totals into this data because especially like the weekly average here, these are totals of these other values and they will tend to distort the graph. And so we're gonna go, we're gonna leave those out of our data. Select chart. Now, because the data is more complex, um, there are other kinds of charts that the, the uh, spreadsheet program is going to try to suggest to you. So let's look at a couple of different ones. Um, they've suggested the stacked graph. Um, eh, that's okay. Uh, it's gonna, it's organized by department and not day of the week, which is what we want. So that's good. Um, again, you could do the horizontal orientation. Um, another option would be the cluster graphs. So similar to the one we saw for the week one, week two, week three. Uh, but again, so organized by department, not by day of the week. Um, the days of the week can go in the legend. So there are some other options. One thing that you probably do not want to use is these percent stacked graphs because then everything is the same, all the bars are the same height and you can't really tell which department is doing better. It, this is more like a combo pie chart. Uh, so we don't want to do that. So either the stacked columns uh, as we saw here or the uh, cluster. And since we did the cluster with the other one, I'm going to stick with this one. Um, again, our chart title um, needs something and our vertical axis needs something. This is average profit in dollars and the chart title, uh, again, Monday, Tuesday, days of the week are not very helpful. Um, instead, what we would want to say is average profit by day of the week by department. So access titles, Descriptive title, 
And then again, this, the focus here is on which departments are making the most money, which are, have the best profits. And so this organization by departments is how we need it and avoid organizing by day of the week. Now, depending on how you set up your table, it may default to days of the week down here versus um, departments down here. And the Sheets is gonna behave a little bit differently than Excel does. And so just kind of be aware, um, although this is not profit, this is actually sales. Uh, make sure that you're doing the right thing, labeling it correctly for each graph. And then you could create a similar graph for the profit. And I'll just move this again off to the side. Um, that will, again, display uh, the profit values in the same configuration. So highlight the department names and then only up to the seven days of the week. Um, insert chart and we'll leave it as a stacked column graph. We'll customize the chart title. And this is indeed average profit in dollars. And this is... Um, chart title is not the days of the week. It's average profit for each uh, department by day of the week. And then, of course, get move it off of your data and you can adjust the size of the graph if you need to in order to make sure that it's not uh, don't make it too small obviously but you can adjust it to make it uh, fit better with some of your calculations all right so those are our bar graphs we have one last option to attempt to, to construct and that is the pie chart, and that will be in the last video.